Alrighty, so let's talk about the first fight. I know uh, Berman had, um, I always pronounce this wrong, Rambo Maliosis. I think it's Rambo Maliosis. Rambo yeah. Maliosis. But you know, here's, here's the funny thing is, I didn't know. I didn't know what happened. I know we was in good shape. We were prepared for the fight. And honestly thinking, I'm thinking, you know what? The way he's feeling, this should be a four round fight. And by the time we got to the third round, I'm like, who in the hell is this fighter I'm watching? Even when he came back to the corner, I said, man, you're all right, what's going on with it? And he just flopped into the seat, slumped over him like, we're in trouble, something happened. Between Monday, uh, when we moved into the hotel, until Saturday night, that something changed. Uh, and I didn't find out later until we went to the hospital that he was dehydrated, severely dehydrated. I'm like, how does a heavyweight? Because I took, you know, I took it lightly. Like, well, it's dehydrated. What the hell that mean? Yeah, I mean, it's heavyweight. You right. Because you don't have to cut to make weight. Right. Two hundred some pounds. Yeah, doc. What are you talking about? And then she explained to me. She said, Well, I'm not sure what the the, the, the normal numbers are, but she said the normal hydration is about two hundred to two fifty, whatever that number is. I mean, whatever they call it. Said Berman was at 3,000. Way dehydrated. I said, 3,000? I mean, how did he get there? She so said, at 3,500, he passes out. At 4,000, he dies. I went, holy shit. I said, he just did 12 rounds. She said, I don't know how he did 12 rounds at that level. On heart. Just heart. Has that been a recurring issue with him within the last two years? And you no, guys no, no, no recurring issue. Everything is clean. Everything is good. Uh, myself personally, you know, this is my first time for something like this happened too. I've always heard about it, especially with the MMA guys, because they cut a lot of weight at the last minute. You know, in boxing, we've been cutting weight 200 years. MMA is sort of new, so these guys are getting their rhamdo ram ram a lot. They call it rhamdo for short. So. I mean, I'm from the MMA world also, so I hear that a lot in MMA because these guys are weight a week and cut 18, 20 pounds. Mm. You know, the way they do it, they're the sauna, you know, they drop the weight. But I never heard it in heavyweight. I'm like, well, how does a heavyweight? You can get on the scale with a Big Mac and make weight, so how does it happen with a heavyweight? So when, when at the end of the fight, he had to take a urine test and I saw the urine was the color of Coca-Cola, like dark brown. The hell is this? It wasn't blood. I've seen that before. And the doctor explained it to me. He said, no, it's dehydrated. The bone was spewing, trying to find liquid. And um, it was spewing liquid out of the muscles or something of that nature. Yeah. So I said, okay. He was sick. The question is, how, when? You know. So now we address that. Now I pay more careful, more attention to him. And make sure that uh, he's hydrated, he's strong, he's eating right, he's drinking enough fluids, and, you know. Did you guys discover what the cause of it was? No, we kind of know a little bit, but we're not, you know, we, we kind of know, but we sort of address all those issues. We kind of just kind of move forward from there, you know. Yeah, he made a mistake, but he won't make another one. Fair enough. Yeah. So what different things have you done in this camp preparing for the fight? Since you fought him before, you kind of know his style. Yeah, well, you know, here's the thing. We really haven't done anything different. We just kept up with the same training. I thought he was in pretty good condition and pretty good style-wise to take Wilder in the last fight. So we sort of just stuck with the same plan. I mean, that's no secret to being a tall guy. I mean, that's Mike Tyson. That's Joe Frazier, the late Joe. You just get you just had to get him under those punches and go, and go to work. You got to close the gap. That's it. That's no, that's no secret. You don't want to box with him. You want to cherry drafts with him because the guy with the longer jab is going to always beat you to the jab. Your job is to get up under him. His job is to keep you off of him. But I think the guy that's going to apply the pressure is the guy that has a better chance of winning from a guy that's trying to stay away from the pressure. Do you think he was successful with staying away from the pressure in the first fight? First fight, Berman was, Berman was a shell. He was zero. Uh, and Wilder sort of figured it out about round four and confident grew, he just boxed him. And every now and then Berman get a shot or two in, but he didn't but he just didn't have what it took to just finish him off. Yeah. That extra protein, that extra, that, deep, that extra if I had just if, if I had just twenty one percent of his ability, I think we'd have got him. Like if you had to give me a percentage, what was he at in the at first that, fight? At that fight, probably about twenty five percent. Oh wow. Yeah, he was bad. 
Okay. That was pretty bad. Yeah. Just give me 50% of Berman. If I had 50% of him that night, I think it would be a different fight. I noticed with this fight, a new addition to the team is Jay Prince. Who, uh, how did that relationship come about? Well, you know, we had, we had a manager that was uh, Camille out of Canada. And uh, uh, sometimes, you know, you got to, in this game, this game, is full of, this game is full of wolves and snakes and tigers and sharks on land. <laughs> these guys don't even drown. They just, so, you know, to deal with some of these sharks, we got to get a shark too. They're going to represent us, you know. Because I really believe if we didn't have this shark, they'd just bypass us. So, have there been uh, promotional problems? And well, is that you why know, it's always, it's always some pol political issue going on in, in the fight game. <laughs> and, and if you, you just need a shark to watch your back. Absolutely. Simple as that. <laughs> Absolutely. So, what? Okay, I'm trying to. Uh, yeah. So, is it more on the opponents in your opponents in? All or ends. All ends. Oh. Everybody. So everybody. You got you got to protect yourself on all ends. Yeah. From the promoter to the to the, to the commissions to you know, fighter got to be represented because if the fighter's not represented very well, man. You know, they walk right over you. I don't care who it's from. I mean, from the opposing opposing promoter. I mean, you hear. Lou DiBella constantly, well, he doesn't deserve the fight. I mean, what do you, well, what do we got to do? What, what, I mean, what do we got to do to deserve the fight? I mean, we had jumped through all the hoops. We went over the brush of the fight. Not our fault the kid, the kid showed up on drugs. So that sort of made us the mandatory. Um, uh, you know, now we're here. I mean, what do you mean deserve the fight? We have nothing to lose. What do you mean we have nothing to lose? We had a fight to lose. <laughs> we have a career to lose. You know, I'm gonna make you just scared. The key is you got a fighter that says, uh, well, your guy haven't fought in two years. I, give me an opponent that haven't fought in two years. I'm very confident. I'm like, shit, he ain't fought in two years. We killing him. I don't think they're thinking that way. They think this guy's dangerous. Two years is not. They know. I mean, listen to Lou. He's been crying his whole thing. Oh, you know, he has nothing to lose. Lou, relax. It's just boxing, baby. That's all. Why do you think Wilder paid the step aside for you? Well, you know, the thing about it is, you know, at the end of the day, this is a prize fight. It's still about the money. Their camp figured that it was more money for Wilder to fight someone else than fights the Vern. Now, that sounds good on paper. I think their camp is concerned that Berman is a bump in the road. And no one wants to face that bump or that elephant in the room, as you show, so to speak. No one wants to face that. But now we're here. It's like, damn, we, you know, you know, everybody's talking about Dillian White and Joshua. Man, I'm not looking at none of those guys. We got Deontay Wilder in front of us. That's all we're looking at, that's all we focus on. It's Deontay Wilder. When you get a fighter that's focused somewhere else other than what he has to fight, you get a fighter that's not concentrated. You get a fighter that think he had a guaranteed win. Ain't nothing guaranteed in that ring. Nothing. You got a beast in front of you. A hungry beast. Yeah. Do you think Berman has to win by knockout? Do you think they will give him a decision? Well, you know, I'm a firm believer. And you know, I used to play baseball. And I would never go to the plate to try to hit a home run. Just hit the ball, get a base hit, you're okay. Man, today's world, you gotta hit the home run. You gotta knock them out. I don't trust these judges half the time. Most of them can't see any damn way. The hell fights they watch most of the time. I mean, look at the decisions we've been getting lately. What are your thoughts on that? How can that be corrected? Because there have been a lot of just outlandish decisions lately. Well, you know what? One of these days, you and I are going to talk on a different level about a different thing that I'm going to be doing, promotion. I think a lot of times, it's sort of almost unwritten, unspoken, that a lot of judges lean toward the promoter, you know, to make sure they're going to keep working. You know what I mean? So, I mean, 
I mean, I've even been in that position sometimes where I've gotten the favorite decision. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'll tell my fighter, well, you didn't win that night, but you got the favorite tonight. It's boxing, you know, so I can't sit here and go, well, it's, just, it's a bad thing, it only happened to, no. I've, I've, gotten favorite, I've gotten favorite decisions. Do you think there's anything that can be done to fix that, though, to correct well, it? Yeah, I, I, I got a plan. So, like I say, one of these days, off, one of these days when we're talking about something other than this fight, I'll show you my plan. Your yeah, to clean it all up. So, do you think Vermin could get a decision in New York? I think he can get a decision. I mean, you know, it, uh, it got to put the work in. You know, I don't want a decision. I want him to go out there and get rid of his boy as soon as he can. You don't get paid to loan you in the ring. Uh, can he knock Wilder out? Yeah, he can. Can Wilder knock Berman out? Well, Wilder can knock anybody out. But can he knock Berman out? Everybody can get knocked out. But did he knock Berman out on one of Berman's worst night? No. So Berman's very confident. Like, you can hurt me on my worst night. You really not gonna hurt me on this night. So. How much pride is in it for Berman? Like, he was the first Haitian heavyweight champion. Right. How much pride is, it, is in it for him well, to get his belt back it, it, in? It's, it's a lot of pride. You know, it's, it's one thing to win the title, then to lose it right away, that's heartbreaking. You know, you ain't no champion until you defend it. You know, that, the title defense is always the defense. Now you are somebody now. I've made it, I've defended it. Now I just stepped over that hurdle. Wilder well, got five defenses. Like I told somebody on this team, you guys have had it long enough. Now it's our turn. Time to bring it back home. Gotta bring it back.